Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will give you a complete farming guide for the new Halloween Rising 2023 event. Despite my very limited free time at the moment, I decided to make this guide for mainly two reasons. First of all, this event will give us a lot of goodies. In particular, past welfare servants and seas, as well as their coins, but we can get much more stuffs from this Halloween event, so you really don't want to miss out on this one. Secondly, this event introduces a new gameplay change when it comes to farming. Namely, now we can have up to 6 enemies in the same wave, just like with Lost Well 6 story. This means that arts and even quick looping is the way to go when it comes to farming for this event, since now we can get much more refund from the enemies, so as a consequence the level 90 plus single nodes that usually requires very specific farming comps as well as plug suit now becomes much easier to farm even without order change as we will see when we list the best farming comps available for the level 90 plus single nodes before we start in earnest as usual if you find this type of content useful please let me know by leaving a like a comment and subscribing to the channel these type of farming guides require quite a bit of time to make and sadly they are not the best choice when it comes to return of investments. Meaning if my primary aim was to grow the channel I would focus probably on uh, tire list, uh, hot takes, uh, review and something like that. I feel like they will take uh, far less time to make uh, and they will give a uh, much better return of investments. But I started up this channel with the aim to give you farming comps uh, and guide for events, since at the time I felt like we were lacking in this type of guides uh, in the community at least outside the lottery events. So to summarize, if you find this type of guide useful, please let me know. I always read all comments, even if I don't respond. And you may think it's not much, but it's really your support that keeps me going. Now let's start taking a look at the extra goodies you can get from this Halloween event. Basically, on top of everything we usually get from an Halloween event, this time we can get past welfare and seas from previous Halloween events, as well as servant coins for those past welfares. Keep in mind that all those welfare servants have been buffed during the pre-release campaign, so you should definitely be able to find some use for them even as a veteran player. And speaking of veteran players, if you own all the past welfers, you will get a lot of rare prism from this event. Basically, checking future events, I'll be able to get Bond Grails, aka Lanterns, from the rare prism shop every month until we reach the JP server. And that's without having to burn any of my 4 star servants, which is a great boon for us free to players. When it comes to the old seas you can get from this event, there are only four that are worth mentioning. First of all, Aerial Drive is still the best free starting MPHR seas when it comes to Buster DPS. Be sure to maximum break it and level it up to 100, no question asked. You will get all the sea bomb to level it up from the next Guda Guda rerun that we will probably get uh, right after the end of this event. In case you weren't aware, that is the best place to roll all your friend points. Second place surely goes to Halloween Princess C. This was the first free starting in PCRCs we ever gotten in this game. It's a 6 year old C guys, and it aged quite well since it still gives the highest amount of MP damage buff among all 50% starting MP charges is. And remember, we live in a world where Oberon exists, so even if you could argue that Holy Knight Supper C is still the best choice given its higher attack stat, being able to double down on that extra MP damage should level the field. Of course, when it comes to specific card types, we have better choices for damage, like the aforementioned Aerial Drive for Buster. 
but still having a general C that works with any card type should make things easier for newer players that can't uh, level to 100 every C they get. In particular, if you lack Holy Knight Supper C, this is definitely your best choice uh, as a generalist C. Next, we have Made in Halloween C, which really takes healing to another level. Slap this C on Kiara and she will never die, unless she gets an MP in the face unprepared. I know that healing isn't really a big deal in this game since we have Castoria that can nullify all type of damage, but still we can't deny that this is the best C when it comes to healing, and being the best even in a niche field makes it worth getting. If you like a soloing challenge quest like me, you'll definitely find some use for this C. Lastly, we have Heroin Ellie Chance Adventure, which once again, if you remove Generalist C like Black Grail or uh, Evans Fields, is the best choice for Buster DPS when it comes to damage, at least when using a Noble Phantasm. The only C that could compare to it is Demon King of the Sixth Heaven from a past Guda Guda event. They both have the same pure attack stat and the same total amount of combined buster and NP damage. However, this second one is a limited gacha seas that you need to maximum break, so either you already have it or you won't ever get it. Same with Black Grail and Evans Fields, they are both better choice for NP damage, and once again remember, Oberon exists, but still they are both gacha seas with no rate up, I might add. I'm sure I will use my C ticket next year for another copy of Black Grail. Then I'll just need one more from the gacha to maximally break it. I'm hoping it won't take years. Let's move on to the new stuff we can get from this event. And since we just talked about past Cs, let's start with the new Cs. When it comes to three seas, you will get three different ones. All of them are five star seas, and you will get one from the event shop and the other four from each different point ladder. So don't worry, if you will finish each point ladder, you'll be able to maximum break all three of them without relying on free quest drops. Specific effect aside, all three of them will serve as spawn bonus Cs, as well as bonus damage Cs for this event, meaning that at base each one of them will increase the appearance rate of specific type of enemies by 25% and will give 100% bonus damage to the equipped servant. Max limit breaking them will increase the effect to 100% appearance rate and 200% bonus damage. As you should have guessed, these three Cs are the main focus when it comes to farming comps, since on top of giving quite a big damage bonus, by increasing the appearance rate of enemies, they will increase every type of currency you can get by farming free quests. They are not limited to event currencies like uh, shop currencies and uh, event points. They will also boost the drop rate of ascension materials, as well as uh, skill gems and monuments uh, in case you are still interested in them after farming the lotteries. The bonus spawn rate is capped at 100%, meaning that at most you can double the amount of the specific enemies listed in the seas and that only one maximum broken copy will be needed to max the appearance rate of those enemies. For these reasons, at the start of the event, you should definitely prioritize support servants with the spawn bonus Cs until you are able to maximum break your Cs. Then any extra copy won't have any effect, so you should take support servants with gacha Cs instead. As I said at the beginning of the video, increasing the amount of enemies for each wave will have no demerits in this event, since we can get up to 6 enemies on the field at the same time, so your 3 turns farming comps will remain 3 turns farming comps. 
Instead, doubling the amount of enemies will double the NP refund you will get with Arts and Quick Servants, so you want to have more enemies. After the end of the event, DC won't be slouch either. In particular, Little Taylor's is a rare starting NP charges with NP damage buff and, most importantly, the buff immunity. This one has many applications in both challenge quests and farming comps. For challenge quests, having that debuff immunity right when you enter the field can counter some nasty debuffs that you can't avoid at the start of the battle, since you don't have time to use your skills or NPs. It can work similarly for break bars effects. And remember, this is on top of giving you that precious 50% starting MP charge, as well as a universally useful 15% MP damage buff that works regardless of card type. The only thing lacking is a pure attack stat, but it will be broken otherwise. When it comes to farming, you should remember that some servants have strong MPs or skills that have the merits. Frankenstein and Tamamokat are the most notable examples. But with this C, you can avoid those demerits while starting with a 50% MP charge and getting a damage buff. In the future, we will get another similar free C called Artisanal Soul that replaces the NP damage buff with a crit buff. But overall, since NP damage is more rare and Auburn exists again, I think Little Taylor's is the best choice. When it comes to Gut C that are not Bond Seas, Bear Kings has the highest damage buff at 30% Buster Crit Up. A return match from the Battle in New York event is the most similar one with a universal 20% crit up. But usually, if you want to use crits, you want buster crits. Arts crits are to refill your MP bar, while quick deals no damage, and we already have Scadi with her crit damage buff. Guts C are usually very strong defensive options since the enemies won't be able to bypass them in any way, given that buffs from C are currently unremovable, so that guts will save you no matter what. Unlike C's with evade or invincibility, that can fail you if you are facing enemies with pierce invincibility. That is to say, having a strong damage buffs on top of guts can be useful. Opulent Jade Main is definitely the least noteworthy of the three, excluding the art, of course. The buffs it gives are not the highest you can get from Seas, but at least it's the only C in the game that combines Buster Up, NP Gain Up, and Crit Stars each turn, so you still may find some use to it. Moving on to the event Gacha Seas. I don't particularly recommend rolling for any of them. Well, maybe a roll for one copy of the Jexy because she's so cute in this one. Gameplay wise, the 5 star C may be situationally useful for Buster Servants with a super effective modifier on their MPs, but in that case, we have Duke of Flames that is just better thanks to its pure attack stat and full NP damage buff that can be doubled by Oberon. Moreover, in the future, we will get Rising Mood Rain, which is basically Black Grail with the overcharge effect. It's an extremely important C for Buster Looping for servants like Artoria and Mordred that can refill their NP bar with the overcharge effect on their NPs. And of course, it will be the best choice for damage compared to the two previously mentioned Cs. Moving on to the new servants added with this event, we'll finally get a new Elizabeth Welfare, and this time she is a single target Buster Rider and a very strong one too. Most notably, her third skill is a 30% NP charge, as well as a very big star bomb on a 4 turns cooldown, 
meaning at max level even a single Koyanskaya will let you use this skill two times in a three turns setup. In practice, with a lowered third skill and a pend, she can use her MP three times in a row with just a 30% starting MP charge with the help of double Oberon and Koyan. And 30% charge is usually the base value of event seize so she definitely works for Buster Looping. Even the rest of her kit is very well designed. She has one of the best form of protections, invincibility in the style of Protection of Arrow, her own niche special damage buff against wild beast enemies, which are rare among servants but common among mobs in farming quests. And finally, her single target Buster MP can ramp up in damage thanks to the 20% AoE attack buff for fairy tale servants, including herself, that activates before dealing damage and that lasts for 3 turns. On top, she will clear all the buffs from herself as the first effect of her MP. So in challenge quest, she can clear all the buffs that are not unremovable. To compare her to older servants, she's basically a budget quest, and she can definitely outshine her in specific situations. So a really destroyed welfare well put in place in the current Buster meta. Next, let's take a look at the new gacha servants. Zenobia is our first permanent AoE Arts Archer, so just for this fact alone she is a nice addition to the game. She has really good looping specs, working with double Castoria without troubles, her own niche of dealing with king enemies, just like Scheherazade, and finally she can work very well as a crit DPS despite being an art servant even surpassing the likes of Emia in her optimal conditions. Since Summer Helena doesn't exist for the devs, we will ignore her too and talk about the comparison with Jean Archer. When it comes to looping specs, Jean Archer of course is better. If you have been using her, you know that she is one of the best AoE arts loopers, at least when it comes to refund and NP charge. Since her damage is very low thanks to her abysmal attack stat and no NP interlude or super effective modifier, which I hope they will give her in JP soon since they added Durga aka Kali in the game and she's basically just better. Despite the comparison with such a good looper, Zenobia holds her own against Jean Archer when it comes to NP refund. With standard 3 enemies wave, she refund just a bit less than Jean Archer, but enough to loop, even against Berserkers. And when it comes to 2 or 1 enemy waves, she can actually beat Jean Archer when it comes to refund. And that's of course thanks to her third skill that recharge 20% charge each turn. Keep in mind however that Jeanne has also a 40% NP charge, so she can deal with irregular nodes too. When it comes to damage, of course Zenobia being a 4 star has lower damage, unless you are hitting king enemies of course, then she will outperform Jean Archer. The one aspect in which she is surely superior is her face cards damage with crits. In practice, if she can loop and keep up her NP, which she can do pretty easily, she can maintain 150% crit damage. That's more than Emia. And remember, she has crit stars each turn and a star bomb, so she can crit whenever she wants meaning being a challenge quest or the third wave of a free quest while farming, she can definitely clear any remaining HP with her crits. Yes, Jeanne can crit too, but uh, her crits are awful, all thanks to her low attack stat and archer class modifier. Moving on to Jacques de Molay, 
I feel like she is a decent servant with a lot of potential for future upgrades, but as she currently stands, uh, she is outclassed by other foreigners. When it comes to farming, she can barely work uh, for quick looping setups with double scuddy, as you will see in the farming comps at the end of the video, but when it comes to single core farming, Voyager is just uh, better both for looping consistency, thanks to his uh, flat 20% uh, MP refund, and for damage potential, given that now he has an MP interlude and his wide uh, range niche. In multicore farming, Mole can uh, shine more, in particular she works uh, amazingly well with Doman, which can guarantee her niche, applying curse to all enemies with his third skill, and of course buffing her attack and crit damage. Having an AoE 20% linked to a skill can also be better sometimes, instead of having it on an MP like Voyager, but keep in mind that Voyager can charge your MP two times if you use it in both room 1 and room 2. And if you happen to use Pseudo Servants for farming, which by the way includes very strong loopers and farmers, he can charge them by 40% with just one MP. That's with his recent upgrade in JP. So if he use his MP two times in room 1 and room 2, he will charge 80%. Basically, the other pseudo servants only need their lowered mana loading to use their MP on turn 3. To summarize, when it comes to farming, Voyager is just better than Molay. Unless she will get an MP rank up in the future, making her applying the curse on her MP before damage. That way she can take advantage of her third skill and her special attack buff, working in a similar way of Arjuna Alter. And no, she will not be broken, because Foreigner needs a lot of help with damage, since they don't really have a class advantage. And in her particular case, her attack stat is very low too. But remaining with upper feet on the ground, Mole works a lot better in challenge quest. There she can apply her curse and benefit from her special attack buff, using also her crits to deal damage. In this field she is definitely better than Voyager, I think. However, if you want a challenge quest foreigner, Van Gogh is just a monster. One of the best solo servant in the game, period. I'm not saying Mole is bad, she is just outclassed by her competition, but her kit is solid, and with a future upgrades she can definitely be on par with her competition, or even better. But at the moment, gameplay wise, I would advise to keep your quartz for the summoning banners coming up next. In particular, by the end of the year, we will get another Scuddy rate up, and for those who missed Melusin like me, another rate up for her too, and both of them are higher priorities if you don't have them. Returning to this event, all new servants will have of course the usual damage bonus and bond bonus, so they will have an edge when it comes to damage as main DPS in the farming comps, and in any case you should bring other bonus servants in the backline for the bond bonus. Regarding those that can work as a main DPS in the frontline, Zenobia takes the crown, literally, given her lower party cost as a 4 star servant and her amazing looping potential, while Jacques de Molay can work in quick teams even without plug suit, but as you will see, aside the bond bonus, she will not be the best option. The other bonus servants you will see in the farming comps are Mordred, Napoleon and Shahrazad. To complete our overview of the event, let's take a look at the new command codes. The 5 star Priestess of Silver Key is one of my new favorite command codes for soloing challenge quests. First of all, it's tied to Arjuna command code as the second best star generator command code. And while the healing each turn from Arjuna command code is universally useful when you are soloing, 
being able to remove an enemy attack buff each turn definitely has a lot more potential to let you survive longer, since attack buffs are the most common ones an enemy can have, and when possible why not use both command codes? If your solo DPS want to produce crit star, this one, Arjuna command code and Salter one are the holy trinity. The 4 star command code is also good thanks to his wide niche, it works basically against more than half of the enemies, however the damage value at 15% is not that high, mainly because this is a 4 star command code. Usually for special damage we are looking at 20%. And if your DPS can crit, then critical command codes can go even higher. In other words, it's a good command code that can work most of the time, but with a bit of setup you can use a stronger command code for damage. The 3 star command code is instead just a weaker version of Lover's Holy Shroud command code that we have gotten this year during Valentine event. In this second part of the video we will focus on how to progress in this event, on how to farm with maximum efficiency and of course on the best farming comps available. First of all, as usual, we have three event currencies, whose rates are boosted by event gadget seeds, and on top of that we also have three different types of event points, each one with his own point ladder. These three types of points do not have bonus C available, but as I anticipated previously, they indirectly get boosted by the spawn bonus Cs, together with all other currencies dropped by the free quests. Since a certain total amount of points combined is necessary to progress in the main quest, thus unlocking better free quests to farm, you should always prioritize spawn bonus C in your party when farming, since this is the only way to boost the drop rates of event points. Once we have reached the 100% spawn bonus for all types of enemies in that specific free quest, which can require different spawn bonus Cs, then you can safely fill the rest of your party with gacha Cs, if available since any extra spawn bonus past 100% is wasted. This means that once you get enough copies of the spawn bonus Cs from the 3 point ladder, you can safely maximum break them to reach 100% spawn bonus, and from there when choosing support servants you should always choose those with gacha Cs, just as I already explained in the first part of this video. From now on, when talking about farming efficiency and even farming comps, I will always assume 100% spawn bonus for all type of enemies in the free quest. There is literally no reasons not to bring the spawn bonus Cs, since you can double up on all currencies you will get from farming, not only event points and shop currencies, but also essential materials, as well as skill gems and monuments. On top of that you can get a massive 200% special damage on your main DPS, meaning you can safely neutral class farm in this event. If you are not tired of using the usual extra class powerhouse farmers. Taking a look at the free quest available for this event, as usual, new free quest will unlock on a daily basis with main quest completion, requiring a certain total amount of event points as I said before, and of course later nodes will have better drop rates, so you should hold on your apples until we reach the final level 90 mixer node, or better when we reach the 3 final level 90 plus single nodes. As I anticipated before, the new change with this event allowing us to get 6 enemies in the same wave means that with the help of spawn bonus Cs we can easily farm the level 90 plus single nodes even without plug suit. 
and as you will see in a moment, uh, these level 90 plus mix nodes are really efficient. Let's go into details comparing these best single nodes to the best mixed node. Remember, these numbers are always assuming 100% spawn bonus. I won't stress this out again. Furthermore, I'm also assuming you still need all three types of event points and all three types of shop currencies. Since if you only need one to clear the event, obviously you should farm the best single node. When it comes to the three event points to climb the point ladders, the mixed node is on par with the three single nodes. They both give around 24,000 points. However, for all other goodies, the single nodes are definitely better than mixed node. First of all, the mixed node requires all three types of spawn bonuses to reach 100% spawn bonus for all types of enemies. Instead, each single node will require only one type of spawn bonus C. That means you will have more slots available in your party for gacha C's. 5 slots in the single nodes versus 3 slots in the mixed node. For a total maximum drop bonus potential of plus 10 versus plus 6, as you will see in the coming graph. Since we are talking about spawn bonus seeds, single nodes are also more efficient when it comes to seed drops. The worst single node has a drop rate of 2.1% compared to the combined 1.8% of the mixed node. And of course, getting to maximum break those seeds earlier will increase your efficiency. And remember, just like I said in the first part of this video, some of those seeds are really good. In particular, I will personally try to get my hands on as many copies of Little Taylor's seeds as I can. And I suggest you, you do the same. For all the reasons I have explained before. Another advantage of the single nodes is that each one will drop a spawn bonus C that is used in another single node. So if you are lucky and you get a drop while farming one specific single node, you will have a much easier time farming the other two single nodes, since you will start with an extra spawn bonus C, thus an higher spawn bonus at the beginning and you will be able to maximum break your own copy earlier. When it comes to Ascension Materials and Skill Gems, all three single nodes drops at least one material with double efficiency when compared to free quests. This is of course thanks to the 100% spawn bonus. Without it, they will be on par with free quests. The three maps in question are Spirit Root for the Bronze node, Flaming Oni Lantern for the Silver node, and Secret Gem of Berserker for the Gold node. The Mixed node does have a better drop rate for Tearstone of Blood compared to Free Quest, but it's only 1.5 times more efficient, not 2 times as with single nodes. Finally, for the 3 event shop currencies, my usual farming efficiency analysis is much simpler this time. In case this is your first rodeo on this channel, we are gonna call X the single drop bonus when farming the single nodes, and Y the mixed drop bonus while farming the mixed node. In practice, just count the number of gacha seeds in your party, remembering that uh, maximum broken copies count as two. The game already tells you your total drop bonus if you check the info in the party selection screen. Then you just need to draw the point of coordinate X and Y in the following graph, and if that point fall in the blue region above the blue line, then mixed node is better than single nodes. Otherwise, if it falls in the white region below the blue line, single nodes are better. As you can see, the white region is much bigger than the blue region. So for most of you, single nodes are better. But just to help you understand how to read these type of graphs, let's make some practical examples. 
First of all, since we are assuming 100% spawn bonus, the Mixed Node only has 3 slots available for Gacha Seas, so a maximum plus 6 drop bonus with only maximum broken seas. Instead, all 3 single nodes have 5 slots for Gacha Seas, meaning a maximum potential of plus 10 drop bonus. As you can see from the graph, with zero gacha seeds, the mixed node is slightly better than single nodes. This is only the case for players without any silver or gold gacha seeds that are still taking supports with spawn bonus seeds to reach 100% spawn bonus. This is not the case for the bronze node, since all of you will get a free bronze gacha seed. Once you'll have Max Living Broken your own spawn bone C, not needing any more from supports, then since you should be able to get at least a base gacha C from supports while farming the single nodes, for it to be better you will need at least plus 3 mixed drop bonus while farming the mixed node. If you have good friends and you can find a Max Living Broken gacha C from supports, this number jumps to plus 5 mixer drop bonus for the mixer node to be better. And finally, if you can reach plus 3 single drop bonus, so you'll need at least one gacha C of your own and a maximum broken one from supports, then single nodes will always be more efficient than mixer node in any case, even if you can bring the max possible mixer drop bonus. All these numbers can be extrapolated by this graph, of course. Hopefully this can help you understand even future ones. Moving on, in this third and final part of this video, I will give you the best farming comps for the three level 90 plus single nodes, since as we have just seen, they are the most efficient ones to farm. As a standard practice, I will leave here my usual important farming tips and the assumption I have used when creating and then ranking the different farming comps. In particular, remember that the event bonus damage will stack multiplicatively with attack buffs and card effectiveness buffs. Instead, it will only stack addictively with NP damage buffs and special damage buffs. So servants like Arjuna Alter or the new Jacques de Molay that can stack up NP damage buffs while looping will not be as strong as usual when it comes to damage in this event. Don't worry, both options will still work in this event. Speaking of damage, of course I will always assume a min roll when checking the refund and kill potential. And when it comes to attack stat from seeds, I will always assume level 20 for both base and maximum broken seeds. Regarding my ranking of the different farming setups, since this time all farming comps will be 6 slot farming comps, I will not rank them by the event bonus, but only by party cost and damage. The damage criteria is self-explanatory so that leaves only the party cost criteria. First of all, I will always rank higher farming comps that don't require order change. Secondly, I will check the servant's rarity, lower is better of course, prioritizing free to player servants or servants with bond bonus among units with the same rarity. Next, I will rank higher comps that can work with other supports and a lot of different mystic codes, since those comps should be available to more players. Next, I will prioritize farming comps with a DPS that can use a base spawn bonus C, maybe in requiring higher MP level to kill uh, since it has uh, lower bonus damage. These comps uh, can be used before you can maximum break uh, your own spawn bonus Cs. Lastly, I will rank higher farming comps that don't need append skills or only need the level 1 append. And if all the previous criteria I mentioned are equal, I will prioritize permanent servants over limited ones, and even over story-locked ones. Let's start with an overview of the bronze level 90 plus single node. 
with 100% spawn bonus, the layout of enemies is 4 for 1, so this is perfect for hard looping and even quick looping. Given that we have one more enemy than usual to refund in the first two waves. Of course, even Buster Lupin works if you're willing to bring Plug Suit. And if going the Universal Farmer route with Morgan, you can use her Fate Trait bonus for the Green Man in Room 2, aka the IHP enemy. In Room 3, Siegfried has many traits to exploit Zenobia with King. Tesla with Earth and Gilgamesh with Enum Elish are the best option for special damage, while Napoleon gets both an event bonus damage and a bond bonus. Finally, despite the lack of class advantage, Sheherzad can also work for this node with high MP level, since she has both special damage to king enemies as well as bonus damage and bond from the event. On the screen you can check the best farmers for each card type, for which you will find the farming comps next. Well, at least all of them aside the Buster Looping DPS, since they don't need to concern themselves with the refund, their comps are the usual Buster Looping with Double Koyan and Oberon. Tesla is the best option here, since he has both 50% charge and special damage. Next we have Ishtar for her 50% MP charge, so similarly to Tesla she can work with a lower starting MP charge C or without a pend compared to 30% MP charger. Speaking of which, among servants with 30 MP charge, Napoleon is the best choice given his bond and damage bonus. Starting with the arts farming comps, Zenobia is definitely the best DPS for this node. She has lower party cost than other arts 5 star DPS. She has a bond bonus during the event and her damage is unmatched given that she has both special damage and event bonus damage. Even at MP1 with base spawn bonus C, she will clear all room with MP only. Furthermore, her skills don't even need to be lowered in order to loop, and she works with any Mystic Code. So here I've listed the new Halloween Mystic Code since everyone should have it. She only really needs just the slightest master buff she can get in room 2 if you use her at MP1 with a base C. Even the MP damage buff of the new Halloween Mystic Code at level 1 will work. Next we have a comp with Jean Archer that has an higher party cost and no bond bonus. Damage is also lower and for that reason we are using Castoria MP to buff it. This way, an MP1 Jean Archer will kill all enemies with MP only with a maximum broken spawn bonus C. In that case, you can also substitute one Castoria for Tamamo with a level 1 append on Jean Archer. The Tamamo comp need the maximum broken spawn bonus C in order to deal enough damage. If instead you are using a base C, Jean can leave max 3k HP in room 2 and max 15k HP in room 3. That is assuming level 10 Arctic Mystic Code used in room 3. I've written that any Mystic Code works because with a maximum broken spawn bonus C you don't need any master buff. In third place we have a farming comp with Summer Musashi that has lower damage compared to other Arth DPS, given her half class advantage. To be precise, at MP1 using a level 10 Arctic Mystic Code, which is the best option for damage, she barely kills with a maximum broken C. With that said, she can technically loop with a base C, but you'll need a higher MP level in order to reach the damage required. Moving on to the best quick farming comp, this one features Atalante, which has the lower party cost among quick farming comps that don't require plug suit. However, keep in mind that she will need at least MP2 or MP3, depending on which mystic code you want to use, in order to refund enough. 
her refund in this node is particularly tight since all her skills must be lowered and she needs some masculine broken C to refund enough with overkill. If you're lucky and you have her at MP5, refund will be easier and she will kill with MP only in all three rooms. Instead, with the minimum requirements of NP2 and a maximum broken CE, she can leave max 35k HP in room 3. But given the sea of crit star she will create while looping, you should be able to finish the job with face cards easily. In second place we have Dantes, which is the best quick loopers at the moment, working without plug suit and with uh, different mystic codes, but I have put him in second place because his party cost is higher than Atalante. My advice is to use this comp with NP2 Dantes and Maxlin Broken Spawn Bones C. In fact, at MP1 he will need crits in room 3 in order to kill. And check the skill usage above, since at MP1 it will change in order to guarantee the kills in room 2. Similarly, he can refund even with a base spawn bonus C, but his damage will be very low without higher MP levels. And skill usage may change. Regarding the 3 mystic code available, Fragment has the best damage, Babylonia can work with a level 1 append instead of level 10, and finally Mage Association can help you with Carl RNG in room 3 if you use NP1 Dantes. In third and last place we have Jacques de Molay, which despite having the best damage and bond bonus among quick DPS, needs plug suit in order to loop. At least even at MP1 with a Maxlin Broken Spawn Bonus C, she will clear all rooms with MP only. She can loop with a base Spawn Bonus C, but she will need a higher MP level in order to reach the damage required. Moving on to the Silver Level 90 Plus Single Node, with 100% Spawn Bonus, this time the layout of enemies is 6 to 1 which again favors arts and quick looping. It's a bit more difficult to loop in room 2 with only 2 enemies, but to compensate the looping in room 1 is basically guaranteed with 6 enemies. And in any case, remember that these are caster enemies, so the ones that gives the best NP refund. When it comes to damage, the pumpkin in room 2 has very high HP, and no traits to exploit with the usual loopers. Similarly, in room 3, Geronimo only has the human attribute to exploit, Koyan gives bonus damage to all Buster loopers, but she will not give it in room 2 with the pumpkin having basically the same HP. Speaking of Buster loopers, Morgan also has her own special damage against human attribute enemies. Technically, for Arts, Okusai has it too, but her damage will be very low in room 2, so I can't really recommend her. Just like in the previous farming node, I will not list in details the Buster Looping comps, since they all require starting in Picharge C and Double Koyan plus Oberon with Plug Suit. Drake is the best choice for damage and the 50% NP charge. Next we have Morgan with the same 50% NP charge and special damage in room 3. And finally among 30% NP charger, Arjuna Alter has the best damage, beating the likes of uh, Okita Alter and Europa. Starting as usual with the Arts Farming Comps, the best DPS for this node is definitely Habitrot. This one right here is a low cost and free to player comp that is intended to work with a maxlin broken spawn bonus C. That way, Abedroth at MP5, she will clear all rooms with MP only. Meaning, if you have cleared Lost Bell 6 to unlock Abedroth, you'll only need a support Castoria to farm this node with maximum efficiency. Furthermore, Abedroth's second skill doesn't even need to be lowered in order to loop, if you have level 1 append. Similarly, with a pen skill on Abetrot, you can also use other mystic codes. 
aside the tropical summer that works uh, without any append. If you only have a base spawn C on Abertroth, then you'll want to bring a second Castoria to increase the damage. Once again, her skills don't need to be lowered in order to loop, and this time she can work with any Mystic Code. Just keep in mind that even at MP5 she will need just a small help from Master Buffs in Room 2 in order to kill with MP only. Next we have a comp with Da Vinci Lily, which has good damage and can work even with base C, although she will need 2 Castoria NPs in order to reach the damage required. So it can be a somewhat slow comp if farming time is taken into consideration. But being able to kill a MP1 with a base spawn bonus C is definitely worth it. Keep in mind that at MP1 she will need a Mystic Code buff in order to kill in room 2. Arctic Mystic Code has the best damage, but other can work too. If instead she is equipping a Maxlin Broken Spawn Bonus CE, she will kill in all room without any Castoria MP, meaning no more long farming time. Finally, in third place we have a farming comp with Chiara that has lower damage than Da Vinci Lily since she can't use uh, double Castoria MP. In any case, she will still kill at MP1 with a Maxlin Broken Spawn Bonus C without any help from a Mystic Code, so you can even bring the Halloween one. Technically, she can loop even with a base Spawn Bonus C, but she will need a higher MP level to kill a room 3 with MP only. At least she'll be able to kill in room 2 even at MP1 if you bring a level 10 Arctic Mystic Code. So if you want to rely on face cards you'll only need to use them in room 3. Moving on to the best quick farming comp, Doman is definitely your best option for damage among quick loopers that can work without plug suit. He can kill all rooms even at MP1 with a maximum broken C. Technically, he can loop even with a base spawn bonus C, but damage will be low in room 2 and room 3, so higher MP levels are advised in this case, even if uh, quick farming comps are more reliable when it comes to face carding, given that you usually get uh, crits unlike arts farming comps. This farming comp work with both uh, Fragment of 2004 Mystic Code and Sheldea Pathfinder Mystic Code. However, this second one requires higher MP level to always kill in room 2 and room 3. In any case, the skills I've listed above are for the NP1 loop. At higher MP levels, their usage may be different. Next, we have a comp with Dante as main DPS. If you want to kill with MP only with this one, you will need the NP2 Dante and a Maxlin Broken Spawn Bonus CE. Instead, at MP1, he can leave max 3k HP in room 2 and will need crits in room 3 for a maximum of 45k HP. Technically, he can loop even with a base spawn bonus C at MP1, but damage will be very low. And having RNG for crits even in room 2 is not ideal. Again, in third place, we have Jack de Molay, but this time she can work without plug suit. However, her refund is very tight, for that reason she requires both a Lorad Append and a Maxlin Broken Spawn Bonus C in order to refund with Overkill. I advise this comp with at least MP2, that way she will kill with MP only in all room, however she can technically loop even at MP1. In this case, keep in mind that even with both Skadi skill 2 in room 2, she may fail to kill so you may need face cards even in room 2. The only free quest left to talk about is the gold level 90 plus single node. With 100% spawn bonus, the layout of enemies is 261. Strangely symmetrical compared to the previous silver node. However, there are two main differences. First of all, of course, here we have Berserker enemies, which have their pros and cons. On the bright side, damage is not a problem usually, so we can bring our best loopers. On the dark side, Berserker have the lowest amount of MP refund, 
so those without a self and charge may struggle. To alleviate things a bit, in room 2 we have some special enemies that have increased MP refund, namely the 4 ghosts. The second important and big difference for this gold node is that the spawn bonus C, when maxly broken, can give our DPS a 50% starting MP charge, meaning this time even Buster Loopers can work without plug suit. So for this node I will also give Buster Looping comps in details. The trick to avoid plug suit when Buster Looping is to use Oberon in order to clear the low HP enemies in room 2, at least if you are not bringing Q Caster. For all farming comps, keep in mind that the boar in room 1 has very high HPs and that only Murasaki Caster has special damage among loopers. Fortunately, being a berserker, damage is usually not a problem. In room 3, Qualter has instead a lot of traits to exploit among loopers, namely Vritra, Avenger Nobu and Napoleon for the divine trait, Lancer Artoria for both the chaotic and evil trait, Tesla and Ereshkigal for the earth attribute, and of course the usual Gilgamesh with Enuma Elish. Just like in the previous silver node, the two same farming comps with Arbertroth are the absolute best ones. Just like before, with a maxly unbroken spawn bonus C, you can use this completely free to player comp, requiring only a support Castoria. It's also the comp with the lowest possible cost. Arbertroth at MP5 with maxly unbroken C will clear all room with MP only. Furthermore, Arbertroth and Paracelsius skills don't even need to be lowered in order to loop. Keep in mind that a Mystic Code buffs is needed to kill in room 3 and that Arctic Mystic Code is the best for damage. But if you want, you can use other Mystic Codes. This comp is intended to work with a maximum broken C, but technically can work even with a base C. In that case, however, you will need a pen skills and other Mystic Codes, and of course damage will be much lower. If you really want to use a base spawn bonus C, I advise you to bring double Castoria. That way, MP5 Abertroth will kill with MP only. And just like before, Abertroth skills don't even need to be lowered in order to loop or kill. Once again, a Mystic Code buffs is needed to kill in room 3, a lot of different Mystic Code can work, but if you want to be sure, use Arctic, since it offers the best damage and it's a pain to level up. If like me you have yet to clear Lost Bell 6, you can use Sig instead of Abertroth to maintain the free to player DPS. NP5 Sig will kill in all room with a maximum unbroken spawn bonus C. And just like Abertroth, his skills don't even need to be lowered in order to loop and kill. In practice, any Mystic Code works this time, since you only need a minor buff in room 3 in order to kill. Even the MP damage buff from the new Halloween Mystic Code is enough. Once again, Seek can loop with a base spawn bonus C, but damage will be low. Precisely, he won't kill with MP, so you'll need face cards. The next comp maintain the same low party cost, dropping the free to player DPS but gaining the bond bonus with Zenobia. At MP1, with a maxly unbroken spawn bond C, she will clear all room with MP only. Keep in mind, however, that the loop is tight in room 1, so skills need to be lowered. Any Mystic Code can work, but again, Arctic is the best for damage in room 3. Zenobia can loop with a base spawn bonus C even at MP1, but again, damage will be low. Furthermore, she will need a Pend and or other Mystic Codes in order to loop and kill in room 1. Since RNG to kill in room 1 is very bad, I highly advise you to avoid this one until you have your own maximum broken spawn bonus C. Finally, increasing the party cost with a 5 star DPS, the best one to bring is Scheherazade for her bond bonus. At MP1, she will clear all rooms with MP only with a maximum broken spawn bonus C. Furthermore, her skills don't even need to be lowered in order to loop in room 1. 
again any mystic code work for the damage buff in room 3, but Arctic is the best one. And just like the other art looper we are talking about so far, even Sheherazad can loop with a base spawn bonus C, but her damage will be low at MP1, and she will need a pend and other mystic code in order to loop. Since with a base spawn bonus C, a side damage, we lose that 20% extra starting MP charge. Moving on to the best quick looping setup. Ushio Akamaru's Mentor is the best choice, being a free-to-player DPS that can work without Plugsuit. NB5 Kichi with a maximum broken spawn bonus C will clear all rooms with MP only. However, looping is very tight in room 1, so skills need to be lowered, and the only mystic code that works is True Eater, since it's the only one with an MP charge and MP gain buff. Finally, since we only have bond coins for Kichi, we can't use a base spawn bonus C, being unable to unlock her append skill. Well, at least every player without a bond 13 Kichi. Surely there can't be that many out there, right? Next, losing the free to player tag but maintaining the low party cost, we have a Parvati farming comp. At MP1, with a maximum broken spawn bonus C, she will clear all rooms with MP only. Chaldea Pathfinder is the best mystic code for her, but other mystic codes with 10% charge and damage buff can work. Furthermore, if you are using a maximum broken spawn bonus C, Parvati skills doesn't even need to be lowered in order to loop. Instead, she can technically loop even with a base C, but she will need lower the pend. Moreover, at MP1, she will need all buffs available aside Mystic Code in order to kill in room 1. Increasing the rarity of the main DPS but gaining a bond bonus, we move on to a farming comp with Mole, which once again is in third place. At least this time, damage won't be a problem for her. Even at MP1, she will clear all rooms with MP only, even with only a base spawn bonus C. Well, technically she can leave max 8k HP in room 3, but since we have a Berserker enemy, any face card will kill. With a maximum broken spawn bonus C, True Heater Mystic Code is the only one that works without a pend. Instead, if using a base spawn bonus C, she will need lower the pend. As promised, for the gold node, we are going into details regarding the Buster Looping Comps. And at the top spot, of course, we find Cookaster. Nope, no Melusine this time, guys. Since unlike Cookaster, she can't use twice her big NP charge, and most importantly, she has to use it in the first wave, in order to set her NP to AoE thus negating the benefit of a starting MP charge C. Keep in mind that this Cookaster comp is the second lowest when it comes to party cost. Since the previous Arts one with Albertroth has an even lower party cost. If you are using a base spawn bonus C on Cookaster, his best setup is with Double Koyan, since he will need as much damage as he can to deal with room 1. And Oberon gives explosive damage in room 3, but lower damage in room 1 and 2. In any case, any mystic code can work here, and Cookaster doesn't even need the Lord skill in order to loop. At MP5, with a maximum broken spawn bonus C, he will kill all room with MP only. Instead, with a base spawn bonus C, he can leave max 50k HP in room 3. But thanks to his earlier NP and coin skills, he will have 44 crit star in order to crit. And remember, he is facing himself as a berserker, so even coin crits can finish the job. With a maximum broken spawn bonus C on Kukaster, you can instead use the second comp, for which you can take from supports either Oberon or Koyan so it should be available to more players, given the battlefield known as Lost Bell 6 summoning banners. Since you'll need an extra cooldown reduction, Atlas Mystic Code is the only one working with Oberon. And just like the previous one, at MP5, Cookaster will clear all rooms with MP only if using a maximum broken spawn bonus C. 
and once again it doesn't even need the Lord skills in order to loop. As I explained previously, bringing Oberon reduces your damage in room 1, so I don't advise using this comp with a base spawn bonus C. Even at MP5, it can leave max 47k HP on both Berserkers, so that's a lot of RNG for crits. Increasing the party cost slightly with a 4 star DPS, the next best farming comp is this one with Barghest. From now on, all comps will use double Oberon, with one of them using his MP to clear room 2. Given the lower HPs of the enemies in that room, Oberon will clear it at MP1 with any C. This farming comp requires a Machine Broken Spawn Bonus CE, and furthermore, you will need level 1 append on Barghest. So, in order to unlock it, at least MP2 is necessary, or Bone 10 at MP1, since Barghest is story locked and gets more coins from summoning. Unlike the next comp, this one doesn't need a pen for Oberon, since Barghest and P charge is AoE. Still guys, please unlock that append on Oberon and even lower it. I have a lot of Oberon in my friend list without his mana loading unlocked, so I need to use Mystic Codes with 10% charge when I want to farm free quest, and I would really like to level up Arctic Mystic Code in those cases. Back to this comp, the only Mystic Code working with Double Oberon is Mage Association, so not much help when it comes to damage, and in fact Barghest will need MP3 in order to kill all rooms with MP only. However, she can also work reliably at MP2. In room 1, she can leave max 8k HP to both Berserker enemies, so just use one face card before RMP and you'll be done. In room 3, she can leave max 3k HP to Qualter, so any face card will finish the job. Another very similar setup uses Artoria Saber Alter, yet another 4 star story locked DPS that has slightly lower damage than Barghest. Furthermore, this time you will need that level 1 append on Oberon since her charge is not AoE. Technically, Artoria will need MP4 in order to clear all room with MP only, but once again she can work reliably at MP2. She will kill in room 1 and leave max 35k HP in room 3, but since in that room you will have 50 crit stars, you will finish the job with any face cards. Increasing once again the party cost with a 5 star DPS, the best ones are of course those with a bond bonus. First of all, Mordred, thanks to her NP refund, can use other Mystic Codes. Arctic is your best choice with a level 1 append, while the new Halloween Mystic Code is your best choice without any append. Mordred, with a Maxlin Broken Spawn Bonus CE, even at MP1, will clear all room with MP only. She's also the only other Buster Looper aside the Kukaster listed here that can use a base spawn bonus C. Keep in mind, however, that she will need Lord Append and a Mystic Code with 10% charge, and of course, uh, higher MP level if you want to kill with MP only, since you'll have lower bonus damage. The last 5 star Buster DPS with bond bonus is Napoleon which by the way also has special damage against Qualter in room 3, on top of the event bonus damage, but that aside, this setup works very similarly to the Artoria Alter one. It requires Mage Association Mystic Code and can't work with a base spawn bonus C. NP1 Napoleon is all you will need, since the only potential problem is in room 1, where it can leave max 3k HP to both Berserkers, so to be sure, just use any face card before his MP and you'll be done. This concludes my farming guide for this event, guys. Once again, I wanted to make this one into a much smaller video, but once I get started, I usually let myself go. So much for my limited free time.
At least I hope you have found my guide useful and if you have, please let me know by leaving a like, a comment and subscribing to the channel. As you can see, these type of guides really take up my time, so knowing they are useful to someone else really help with my motivation. Anyway, that's all for today guys, hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.